Hello guys, my name is Chris Bowers, welcome to Straight From The Horse's Mouth. I wrote this research and I'll be reading it to you. So let's get straight into this. Um, this racing is actually for Friday and uh, we have the 230 Ascot, a John Guest Racing Brown Jack Handicap Class 3, the three-year-olds plus uh, rated 0 to 95. And it's over two miles, there's 10 runners, it's good to firm. The Andrew Bolding trained Colt Star Calibre looks great at the weights. Uh, both trainer and jockey are reasonably informed, with 19% hit rates in the last 14 days. Um, his side, Golden Horn, has a 22% strike rate, and uh, that's a uh, runs wins over 14 plus furlongs. And uh, his progeny enjoy good to firm. He's been moving up the distances, and the form suggests he will get the distance as he seems more of a stayer than a speed horse. In his recent race in July, over one mile six and a half, he was staying on well at the finish on good to soft ground. So, the ground and distance to suit the selection a star calibre, nine to two with William Hill. Next selection, three o'clock Ascot, one mile, British race courses, join the Sunflower Lanyard Scheme, Valiant Stakes, Group 3, Phillies and Mares, Class 1, three year olds plus. The Rolf Beckett trained declared interest, looks highly underrated in this. Uh, the trainer's recent form is respectable. Um, she ran well over a mile so far as a four year old, and uh, her May win uh, was run in a good time, and she won by two and a quarter lengths and was eased towards the finish. Her fourth at Ascot in June is better than it looks, as it was run in a quick time, and she was only beaten by one length. Uh, last time out in July, she won in a fast time by two and a quarter lengths, carrying nine stone twelve. I don't think she was all out that day, so it looks like this progressive filly could be even quicker. And uh, that horse has declared interest, which is seven to one, with William Hill. And uh, the next one is the six o'clock York. It's one mile, one furlongs, John Wright Electrical Silk Series Female Jockeys Handicap. And uh, this basically should be on good to firm. And Semper Augustus is the mate of a claimer called Safi Osborne. She is claiming five, along with a group of other claimers who are claiming in this race. Um, the trainer, Ed Walker, is in good form with a 20% five from 25 strike rate in the last seven days and a 23 runs to wins ratio, three olds turf in the current season. Um, by Dutch art, um, he has the full brother to Flanders Flame, who had a race and post rating of 105 compared to Semper Augustus' current rating of 78. From this, we can deduce there should be improvement to come with theoretical listed potential and should be capable of at least a mile four. Semper Augustus has good reason to form over one mile. Um, he won while staying on in a decent time over a mile in June, on good to firm and last time out. Uh, last time out, um, he came second by three and a quarter lengths and a decent time. He should go well in this. That's at Semper Augustus, three to one with William Hill. All right, for disclosure, I looked at another race as well. And uh, basically it's uh, Silken Petals in the seven o'clock York. And uh, it's ridden by Hayley Turner. And I looked through the race and I thought, right, this uh, Silken Petals, this is going to be the horse I'm going to base everything else around. I'm going to try and find something to beat it. There's got to be something to beat this. And I looked through the other horses and I couldn't find anything to beat it. And then I looked at Silken Petals again and the horse just does not fill me with confidence. But it was still better than the other horses in the race. So I thought, well, when you look at it, Hayley Turner's got a great record on two-year-old turf this season with a 35% hit rate, 7 out of 20. I thought, well, that's got to count for something. The horse has got a good potential form. It's just really just not done anything too impressive, has it? So yeah, I've, I've gone through all the horses to try and beat this horse. And I've come back to Silk and Petals and I've just gone, you know, I think that there is no value at all in the projected price. Um, they're projecting 11 to eight. That's not a good price for this animal. And there's absolutely no value. So I'm not recommending this one. Um, but the Haley Turner stat is potentially useful and I wanted to share. Okay. So selections for Friday. All of these prices are available at William Hill currently. Um, you've got the 2.30 Ascot, Star Calibre 9 to 2, the 3 o'clock Ascot, Declared Interest 7 to 1, and the 6 o'clock York, Semper Augustus 3 to 1. Now, these are my selections. I've picked them out. Make sure that you're doing the bets that you want to do. You may not want to bet on all three. You might want to just pick one. You want to make up. You might want to make up your own. 
but hopefully I've at least informed you about making a better decision, if not giving you a selection. Okay, so be lucky guys. And uh, yesterday, um, we had a one from 25%, sorry, we had a one, let's start again. Yesterday, we had a one from four, 25% hit rates. Um, basically, if you had bet a pound on each horse, over the four horses, um, on the tipped price, you would have ended up one pound 38 down, and on the um, SP price, you would have ended up 138 down. Sorry, 162 down. So it's very hot in here, I'm doing my best, guys. Okay, so individual races, we had the 3.30 bath, uh, Clarendon House one that, um, set another brilliant time. Uh, he was tipped at 13 to 8, his SP was 11 to 8, um, he was 1 out of 6, and Clarendon House won well after making virtually all. Uh, the time was fast and he went comfortably by four and a quarter lengths. This is an impressive horse and he's going in my notebook. I was well impressed. He's just been setting fast time after fast time after fast time and he did the same again. He destroyed the opposition. Okay, the four o'clock bath, hidden depths. What happened here? All right, <laughs> basically, uh, tipped at uh, SP. Um, SP projected price was about six to four. Um, the prices weren't available at the time, and the SP was actually 13 to 8. Um, he finished 4 out of 4. Um, Hidden Depths was very disappointing. I thought he was pretty solid for the summer form, and I can see no obvious reason for the run, apart from maybe it was too close to his last run on 13th of July for him at 6 years old. I uh, trailed in 11 months behind, and honestly, when I look at what he's achieved, and especially last year, it is disappointing. Um, maybe he needs his races further apart in future, uh, maybe he needs to stick to the hurdles, I don't know. And uh, the 340 Lingfield, Royal Pleasure, uh, finished second out of five. And uh, basically um, he was tipped to SP because the prices weren't available, projected price was 7 to 4, that's the price I was working on. Um, the SP was 11 to 10, which wasn't a great price. To be honest, uh, reflecting the horse's ability, stem to four would have been more likely. Um, Link Morris said that um, Royal Pleasure ran too freely in the early stages. Um, he also got unbalanced over two furlongs out. One and a half lengths behind uh, Motor Wajet, uh, he won in an okay time. So basically, he just ran too freely, uh, didn't have his mind on the job, lost his balance at one point, and things didn't go well. Which was surprising, as high hopes for that horse. Um, this by uh, Kingman, if I remember rightly. There you go. Okay, 750 Leicester, Silent Escape, tipped 6 to 4, SB 6 to 4, finished second from 5. I shouted the house down watching this. Silent Escape lost by a neck. It was so close. Um, he was carrying 12 pounds more than the winner. Um, he won in a great time. Um, the transition to grass was no disgrace, and this one's going in the notebook. Um, they basically got into a big battle at the end and the other horse just won. And uh, bear in mind the horse's lack of experience on the surface, I think that was actually quite a good, quite a good result. Now, I've uh, opened up a Twitter account, yes. So, if anyone wants to follow me on Twitter, I am at equine tipster. And honestly, I'm surprised nobody had thought of that and got it before, but somehow I did so I'm very happy with that. Uh, what I want to do with it is I want to kind of um, collate news together so anyone who comes onto my feed can see collated news um, so they can see um, pictures and videos with events coming up and um, they can find out about great horses they can find out what random stuff I'm up to in the day producing this for you and uh, one more thing I thought I might tell you a little bit of a story from when I was a bookie. So there I am in Hampton Court I don't know if you've ever been to Hampton Court. It was, it is a beautiful place. It's very, very upper class and it's in London. Okay. I doubt all of it's upper class. It just seemed like that kind of area, you know. I mean, it's got a palace. Um, <laughs> what can I say? So, imagine the scene. Absolutely scorching hot, much like it is today. Very, very, very hot. All day, people have been going past. They're wearing less and less clothing. Um, so there was this one guy who went past, every time he went past he just seemed to be wearing one thing less, ended up just wearing a pair of shorts and just people were getting angry outside because they were so hot. And this guy came in, massive great big guy, and he's got these two dogs, and very big greyhounds. 
And uh, I thought, right, I'll do what I always do in this circumstance. I'll give them a glass of water. Well, not a glass of water, a, a bowl of water. You know, it's a nice thing to do. The dogs are knackered. They might have a little bit of heat stroke. Get it done. That's what I say. Good customer service. So I said to him, looks like you've got a couple of non-runners there. That was not a good thing to say. Um, I mean, I did actually say, looks like you've got a couple of non-runners there. Would they like a bowl of water? Okay which would normally please them, but this guy got angry quickly. He was like, this dog won the bloody, 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 blah. And this dog won the epic race, bloody, bloody, blah. One length ahead of bloody, bloody, blah. So they're both quality dogs. How dare you call them non-runners? And I, I, I said, um, so does that mean they're gonna need a bowl each? Anyway, I got the water. He was happy, we made friends. So guys, Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for hearing the tips. And what I'd say to you is if you like this video, smash that like button. If you dislike the video, smash the dislike button. If you subscribe, you can get access to these tips every day, especially if you press the bell. And it's the kind of thing that's gonna keep me motivated. Okay. So any comments um, that you've got about anything, uh, whether it be pronunciation, or whether it be ideas for future content, uh, whether it be about the content I'm actually providing now, then please write it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. So, I've been Chris Bowers. I wish you the best of luck. Please gamble responsibly. And this has been straight from the horse's mouth. Thank you and good night.